And here they are, as mentioned, this will be a long, long one for sure. And a nice handshake, just like we want to see you. And I think here also makes sense uh, that Lars uh, made Pilia go first, especially because in this kind of matchup, uh, you really want to have uh, the sixth card because the Mystic Mine basically is not going to do his job. But then here Pilial starts uh, things off uh, with Pot of Extravagance, uh, giving him a huge advantage uh, by going first. And uh, I think even though the deck strategies are very similar on one hand, on the other hand are very you know different from each other, especially because like the runic cards from Lars indeed uh, put your opponent into a deck out strategy. Instead, Pial prefer to play the good old cards of Jamas uh, with uh, one day of peace. Yeah, and uh, interestingly enough, uh, part of Extravagance is a great card, but it's actually not really ideal against a deck that wants to deck you out. Uh, but of course, you really want to get your hands on the Cauldron, which is the most important card in this matchup. Uh, and unfortunately, Pial doesn't have it at the yeah. moment. So this is the key card of the deck, but already we see an Ojama duo being used uh, and Lars, you can see a little grim on his face, uh, definitely not so this coming, uh, but we might see a rivalry being flipped uh, or a Gozen match from Pial, and it is the rivalry. This deck, funny enough, uh, is actually the winner of YCS Brazil a couple months ago. So it is a deck that shouldn't be underestimated. And as we have uh, commented previously, most tier decks just play one out. Uh, so it's actually quite tough to fight back. Yeah, especially because I think uh, if these guys uh, will find their way to secure their spot into the top 64, Having very few outs, if not one, in the Shizu development deck, it's a problem, because how do you deal with that? Absolutely, and here already we see one of the runic cards, uh, which uh, is not going to make PL happy, of course, uh, but he just saw Sphere Mode, Mystic Mine, uh, and so, as expected, we know this one is going to be quite a long one, nonetheless. And I think... Uh, the, the, their deck strategy is on one end similar, but Lars is on three part of Prosperity yeah. and one Extravagance, while Pial is on three Extravagance and one Prosperity. Um, I think for this kind of match on the Prosperity, uh, like gives you the opportunity uh, to select the, the, yeah. the, the better one out of the, the sixth. And uh. here we see the one copy of Extravagance picked up uh, potentially by Lars. Uh, uh, Dark Bribe, of course, great option, uh, but outside of this, really, uh, on the one hand, uh, I don't know if I want to say I feel bad for them because of uh, the deck they are using, but uh, I kind of do because this deck makes a lot of sense against Tier Element and playing on the bubble against the same exact deck is so unlikely, so I'm pretty sure both uh, could have made it to the top 64 if they just played against Tiers here in round 12. So definitely an unfortunate uh, one. But here we see Abstra Goblin uh, again, uh, not really gonna matter. It's it's gonna be a race essentially to get to the Cauldron from Peel and to get to the Runic cards uh, from Lars. So let's uh, let's see who is gonna be the faster one to achieve that. Uh, but at the same time, the more Peel digs uh, into this deck without finding the Cauldron, the better it is for Lars because his win condition is decking his opponent out. So whenever he's going to draw more cards, uh, I think Lars is super happy about that. Yeah. And I think also here it matters uh, how many useless cards they are going to draw. Because like, for example, Lars has the Wind Dragon of Ryan in the main deck. Yeah. So all these cards are uh, not useful, like also the Dimension Shifter. For sure. And we can guess that this is... Uh, pretty much gonna turn uh, into a game where at some point they start to discard their seven cards in hand uh, uh, which are not gonna do much. Uh, are they both playing uh, old copies of Bribe and Solemns? I would guess yeah, so, right? They are. Uh, yeah. So if they start setting those up we might actually get to see a uh, play in which they just, uh, as we can see here, pick a... Oh, but that's Prosperity. Wait. Prosperity shouldn't shuffle the cards but put them uh, in the bottom yeah. so yeah they are fixing it right away here with double mystic mine putting top on the bottom 
Which is good, by the way, because you don't really want to draw the Mystic Man in this matchup. So yeah, it's it's great <laughs> to just put him on the bottom, uh, but. Um, as mentioned, uh, essentially we could get to a point where they both have like triple solemn or bribe face down, uh, and I think it's really bad for PL that he has the rivalry because that's yeah. a useless one. Here goes with the duality. Let's see if he finds this way, but no, he gets to see the extravagance. And yeah, this is uh, pretty much gonna be uh, actually what we expected. Uh, I'm actually surprised by Lars because, as mentioned, PL only has three copies of Caldron yeah. and that's his only win condition for this matchup. Uh, but Lars has a lot of runic cards and the fact that he still hasn't played a single one uh, is quite unlikely. And here we see duality. We cannot quite tell which cards were revealed. Uh, but Lightning Storm uh, mm. in the main deck, of course, not going to be that useful since he has some Ojamas, but. That definitely something that caught uh, the attention of PL uh, in the main deck. Uh, I think another Solemn could be really good, but Runic Destruction is also a great option. And uh, I got to give the advantage uh, to Lars uh, here with this setup. And he picks up a second copy of Solemn Judgment. As mentioned, what you want to do in this matchup is just to set up uh, four cards alongside uh, Solemns and Bribes. And then uh, you just have more counter traps than your opponent. Uh, counter traps which you're not too familiar with right from oh. the last quiz we did <laughs> oh my someone give me a new partner please i need to win some quizzes funny enough i like uh, they're my cars right i mean <laughs> yeah exactly like alberto always goes on to how he loves the stand decks he always plays eldlit and this kind of decks and then <laughs> and then losing and then, miserably yeah he couldn't even name uh, solemn warning, warning. i mean oh my god which you activated yesterday, by the way, not that many <laughs> days ago at our little time wizard tournament. But back to this one, as expected, again, uh, looking for the Cauldron. Uh, but here we get to see Ojama Duo, makes sense. Uh, you really want to free up your space. I don't think Lars is interested in, uh, you know, having uh, something to do with it. Uh, as mentioned, uh, if you deck didn't win, at Rio, maybe there were more guessing. Uh, is he playing, uh, you know, just dessert? Uh, uh, but since the decklist was published, uh, of course, I think Lars has a pretty good understanding of what kind of deck uh, uh, PL is uh, using. And so there is no reason to negate uh, an Ojama duo. And here also, I think uh, it's going to be very difficult because uh, if PL gets to see his cauldron. Uh, he yep. knows that Lars has true copy of Solemn Judgment and as well. And here we see the first uh, runic card, uh, which is gonna banish the top card. Hopefully not a cauldron. Uh, he's even playing uh, one fountain. That's my... No, he doesn't. He doesn't play fountain. Wow. Not even fountain in the deck. Uh, just wants to use the Mystic Mine. Makes sense. Uh, maybe the one copy could have been cool to draw. Oh, and the banish of the cauldron. Wow. Lars uh, eating uh, the best, and you can see PL shaking his head. This is so unlucky for PL. <sighs> you saw this coming, huh? Yeah, I mentioned <laughs> it, uh, uh, and unfortunately, it did happen. And this is huge because there are only two other win conditions for PL at this point, and uh, we know two solemn judgments are faced down from yeah. Lars. If he has double solemn judgment with a dark bribe, for example, yeah, uh, that might be tough. And here we see duality. Are we gonna get a cauldron? Uh, not, no cauldron whatsoever. He might have to pick up either with the one day right away or the extravagance. He's thinking about it, but what an unfortunate uh, meal uh, from the runic tip. And yeah, he picks up the extravagance, uh, just gonna be able to, uh, I think, manage uh, free from the extra deck, yeah. if I'm correct, but yeah. Still, basically an upstairs goblin for next turn. And uh, yeah, I think he's pretty much done uh, for the rest of this turn. Uh, let's see if he wants to discard something or if he already has six cards in hand. Still, Lars, uh, very familiar with these uh, heavy trap decks as we remember at the european championship he got top four this year with alter guys 
Absolutely, and uh, more than this, just Mystic Mine, which uh, has been uh, a really strong option this weekend. Uh, we have seen a lot of different uh, ways to use the card, uh, both uh, by uh, you know these kind of decks relying on it entirely. We have seen it in T elements, which I think makes a lot of sense. For example, Lorenzo Roma was using it with Beat Cop. Uh, because when you get bestial, the, the idea is uh, your opponent has a monster and then you can uh, use Bitcop uh, not just to protect it, uh, but to activate Mystic Mine going first, which I think uh, was a very smart uh, inclusion in the deck. And now again, PL trying to pick up the Cauldron uh, and I see a Dark Bribe in yeah. there, but what's really costing him uh, at the moment is the Rivalry and now it sets another card which could actually be risky because if he doesn't have another card that he can flip face up this game is over yeah uh -huh. and let's say Lars because honestly if you're Lars do you activate a card for the rest of this duo no, I mean you can just pass uh, and continue doing it and then uh, it's like if we are actually looking at PL deck list what I'm thinking is the only face down card could be another draw which is kind of likely and then uh, it could just be the one metaverse but if that's the case then PL just threw the game out of the window uh, which would surprise me uh, quite a bit uh, but maybe it just uh, wasn't paying too much attention to the to the game state but that would be terrible because okay he does have the metaverse so as expected uh, the only card that he could have activated from face down was the metaverse uh, alongside one of his other cards. But does he not have any field spells in deck? Uh, let's see. He's activating it. Okay. Yeah. Luckily, he does. Gonna pick up a Mystic Mine. Not really interested in using it at the moment. Uh, gonna shuffle his deck and look for one of these two cauldrons. But he's getting really really close to decking out uh, especially if there are a few couple of runics from Lars uh, who is uh, kind of having a good time I think yeah I mean it's just here chilling and here is the cauldron so let's see how many counter traps are gonna be activated because uh, who has more counter traps is actually gonna uh, win this duel I believe and there is no response, no response. from Lars really just gonna okay. try and use the destruction uh, to just pretty much use the counter traps afterwards. Uh, let's see if there's gonna be a response from PL. He's debating, of course, uh, gonna try and use. If they both have free counter traps, uh, then this is gonna be the end of the duel, I believe. Uh, let's see what Lars decides to do. I think you solemn. are forced. Yeah. In, we know that he has double solemn judgment, but this uh, is really turning into a long, uh, long chain. And here is the first solemn. Uh, is there gonna be another one from PL? He needs two face down counter traps because uh, we know Lars has another solemn judgment. Uh, let's see. I think he doesn't have it. Uh, really? really? No, he's definitely considering it, uh, but we know there is another one, so he needs another. And there is the bribe. Here will be another solemn judgment, uh, most likely from Lars. Uh, let's see the consideration. Uh, gonna count the cards in the deck. Uh, what a duel is turning. <laughs> wow. Uh, looks like that Lars has more cards than PL. For sure, deck. for sure. And here will be activated maybe a second solemn judgment. And another dark bribe uh, from Lars. Uh, <laughs> Is there gonna be a final counter trap? But we know another Solemn is there from Lars, so he is gonna be the winner of this chain regardless, uh, which is really bad for Pial. Yeah, he was hoping uh, that Lars didn't have at least a third judgment or a dark bribe, but this is not the case. And uh, yeah, PL drawing a card out of the Dark Bribe, knowing that uh, another Solemn Judgment will be there from Lars, who gets rid of the Cauldron. And now PL needs to find uh, another way around. Yeah, this was so tough, especially because it Ooh. means... Oh my, wow! Wow, this is basically over. I think PL might as well pick up his cards. What an unfortunate way for him to end this duel with two cauldrons banished. Uh, 
but at the same time uh, we have to keep in mind uh, the time on the round that's left uh, because as mentioned there are 30 minutes remaining uh, but this is uh, really really tough uh, for both uh, wow what an unfortunate way to just banish both cauldrons that's uh, yeah this was, was, was very unfortunate yeah And yeah, here, Runic Tip, uh, as I was mentioning, uh, um, basically there are a little less than 30 minutes left on the round, uh, but although PL at the moment doesn't really have a win condition left, is uh, uh, not really interested in picking up his cars because uh, uh, we have to keep in check whether they are gonna deck out. Of course, I can already tell you, Lars is winning this game 100%. But uh, if he doesn't pick up his cards, uh, he can potentially sneak in a draw later on. And with a draw, I think they are basically guaranteed uh, top cut. So yeah. they, they are not too interested in uh, scooping up right away, I believe. And at the same time, I think this makes sense because while PL deck is renewed, Lars deck is definitely something we have not seen too much of previously. So PL wants to check every single card in his opponent deck and uh, might as well. Yeah, which it. I think makes sense, especially because like you saw that he's playing runic cards and also going into side decking, uh, you want to make sure uh, you're siding it correctly, especially because like uh, against your strategy, uh, runic cards are very annoying because uh, basically you want to set up the cauldron uh, play, uh, but with dark drive, solemn judgments being around uh, and also the runic cards is not easy and uh, now, uh, yeah, this is what we are witnessing. PL wants to see every single card Lars is playing. Uh, you don't want to mess this up, especially because no. this is the last round of our event. And after 11 rounds, uh, you are one step closer to getting to the top 64 card. And to be honest, uh, there is one more card which I'm interested in talking about, which is the Lava Golems. Uh, uh, in both players' decks, uh, which uh, are much better for PL since he has these Ujama cards, of course. So that's also a way that he can deal damage to his opponent, I believe. Because the Ujamas cannot be tributed for a tribute summon, but uh, Lava Golem is not a tribute summon, you know. Let's see. Uh, as mentioned, uh, uh, this uh, is getting. Oh, and it gets rid of... Uh, yeah, because he activated the this Wow, and one of the Lava Golems is actually gone. Uh, few, few cards left uh, from PL, who can see is just smiling. Uh, unfortunately, paired against uh, what seems to be almost an impossible matchup uh, for him. And uh, yeah, he's just gonna discard the Lava Golem. Uh, And yeah, now <laughs> PL is left with no cards in his deck. <laughs> and yeah, he is pretty much ready to pick up his cards. And game one goes to Lars and his runic mine deck out deck. What a game one, definitely not what we expected uh, going into this round 12. But we mentioned how there were a lot of decks, uh, a lot of decks going on, and especially a lot of decks trying to counter Tier elements Ishizu, this is one way to do it. This is super annoying, especially because now the Ishizu tier element decks are not playing so many interruptions. So yeah. only the heartbeat is on top of my mind if they're playing it in the main deck. Absolutely. And then talking about the side decks, sometimes they do play either Cosmic Cyclone or the Twin Twisters, but it's not even that popular. Like yeah. we have seen plenty of duelists this weekend just having the one crime and the one heartbeat as outs, and that's it. Which sure you can shuffle back with the Shizus, but essentially if mine resolves, the Shizus are uh, useless. So the only other way to do it is set up the Perle Rhino with the Shizu card, but then again, 
that's only one interruption and in decks that just focus on using Mystic Mine multiple times, uh, that's really tough. Uh, so as was was saying, uh, it's kind of unfortunate that they had to play in this matchup uh, uh, on the bubble. But now what's going to happen is that we're going to go and take a look at the side decks. So Pial is the one who is, uh, uh, might go second and get an additional draw if he feels like it. He really needs to draw the Cauldron. Honestly, Chu getting banished that early, it's uh, very unlikely. But he has a few interesting cards. Uh, among them, we could see RP Feather Duster, Cosmic Cyclone, and especially Curse Seal of the Forbidden One, uh, which is gonna be an interesting counter trap, uh, which you could have named uh, as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, on the other hand, his opponent uh, was already maining Lightning Storm, yeah. which is huge. And he sides uh, the free copies uh, in total, alongside RP Feather Duster. Pop up, which is an interesting card, probably not for this matchup though. But he has three Cursed Seals of his own. So very similar side decks, but Lars with uh, three Lightning Storms that are the main differences in the deck list. Uh, I think still I give the advantage to Lars, uh, but we gotta admit, if uh, PL goes first with a Cauldron, and he set up, you know, a couple counter traps uh, or a Curse Seal, because uh, if you Curse Seal, against the runic destruction that's huge yeah. Yeah. huge so that could actually change the game significantly let's see what these guys decide to do in the very end uh, i see that they are taking out the copies of lava golem uh, makes sense especially from uh, lars i think pl could have kept them in because i was mentioning uh, you can tribute the Jama tokens for lava golem which can give you potentially an additional win con especially when they are forced as in the previous game to activate multiple solemns but i think uh, without further ado there is not much to say anymore about uh, this side deck pattern so let's go back to game two and find out who the winner will be And here they are, so as mentioned, now let's see if PL wants to go second. This is the biggest decision for him. Again, as mentioned, both on a 9 and 2 record, as you can see on the screen, just one draw pretty much guaranteed away from top cut. And I think Lars is gonna go first. Let's see. No, oh, it's okay. Pial who decides to go first. He really wants to pick up his cauldron and wants to be the first one who sets one of his counter traps. And extravagance is a great way to start things off. As mentioned, he really wants to pick up the curse seal to be using against the, the runic destruction. I think, I think this makes sense. A lot. Yeah, I agree with it. After the side deck, it does make sense. What does he eat? RP Feather does it, and there is the Curse Seal. So that could be a really good one. And he picks it up right away. Curse Seal can stop all free runic destruction from Lars. So that's huge already. Good stuff. We saw it. Uh, we saw it coming. Uh, I think this is very good, especially inside decking against uh, current format. Uh, basically, you disrupt your opponent's strategy. And Pial has multiple traps in his hand, not a surprise. I'm surprised that he still goes and set the rivalry. I really don't like that from Pial, because you want to set as many counter traps as possible. Why waste one of the spaces for the rivalry, honestly? I don't think that makes much sense, but let's see. He sets five, uh, solid uh, opening uh, by Pial, but let's see if there will be Maybe Lightning Storm plus Feather Duster. Yeah, I that mean. could be huge. So first of all, we get to see Anojama Trio being activated by PL. Is there a response there? Let's see. There is not much the large food chain to this, or that at least would make a ton of sense to chain to this. And yeah. It resolves, so we get to see three lovely YCS tokens being summoned by Lars. 
And I think he also has the Ojama duo. Not that it matters in this matchup, by the way, but... Yeah. Yeah. He's gonna use the Ojama duo as well. Yes, so Ojama duo plus Ojama trio. This is another win condition of the deck. Since he has the rivalry, whenever it activates then the rivalry, everything is shut down. But this does not make any sense when you're up against a deck like Lars. So I'm surprised that these cards are being kept in and that Lava Golem is sided out because what are you even doing with these kind of cards? Yeah, because they do not work against Lars' strategy. I mean, it's of course uh, not easy to decide what to side out because basically yep. you're playing a mirror match and there are not so many cards to side in. But still... Uh, this doesn't do much, honestly. No, it really does not. And uh, I would actually be interesting to see if there is any cute option in the actual deck from Lars, but he's gonna go right away and banish them. Uh, um, I mean, Prosperity is an interesting target, but I don't think you are ever negating that with the Curse Seal. You really wanna negate cards uh, such as uh, the Runic Destruction, which is the best by far. And of course, uh, what uh, these Ojama tokens accomplish uh, is they make Lightning Storm useless, which is great. Here we already see a lot of different good options by Lars. He could take this uh, in a lot of different ways. Even the bribe uh, seems like a very good option, to be fair. Dark bribe if it seems, uh, seems good. Yeah. Because honestly, as I was saying, I kind of like the others, but... He said he picks up the Curse Seal, and I think that's also very scary because when you activate Curse Seal against the Cauldron, that's GG for PL. So that's a huge way to start this game. Both players setting up their side deck, the Curse Seal of the Forbidden One. So that's huge. Let's see. I think PL really needs another face down. I don't remember if we saw that. Was it Dark Bribe or am I? Ooh, but only Ooh, one set only one. from Lars. Okay. Uh, that's definitely on the weaker side. Uh, and we see the extravagance uh, once again from PL. A great uh, pickup uh, here. Gonna draw two more cards. Uh, of course, uh, not really interested in keeping any of the others. Uh, let's see what he picks up. Uh, it's Cosmic Cyclone, which is a huge pickup from PL to force out the Curse uh, Seal. Great target because he only plays one copy, so that's actually a huge pickup here. And we see the duality. Does he find the Cauldron? That's the best card he's looking for. He does not, but there is an RP and a Solemn Judgment. I think Solemn could be the best by far, but he picks up the RP Feather Duster instead. Understandable, but again, I really would have liked that Solemn face down. I think uh, that's your main priority in this matchup. But once again, not finding these cauldrons uh, that he's really looking for. And now, with three spells in hand, uh, play is back to Lars. Interesting. Uh, PL not using his cosmic, uh, doesn't want to lose uh, in time, although there are 17 minutes left uh, and just passes back. Looks like Lars uh, cannot find any good uh, interruptions apart from the curse seal he picked up earlier. And now Piyal activates the Port of Prosperity and Lars is considering if activating but doesn't make sense to go with the curse seal. Yeah, uh, especially because this is just going to reveal three cars again, trying to look for the cauldron. Does he find it? Uh, he, oh, that's oh. four cars. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. That was, uh, that was the fourth card. Yeah. Yeah. So he reveals three cards uh, again. Uh, gonna probably pick up the one day of peace, I would guess. Uh, definitely the best among those. Cannot activate it right away, but it will put the rest on the bottom of the deck. And yeah, just uh, as mentioned, uh, still trying to find these cauldrons, which just doesn't, are too shy to come out of PL deck. Very unfortunate uh, to not pick them up either in game one or game two. Wow. Because now he's basically gone through half of his deck. Yeah. 
takes time to make a good soup. You know? Yes, <laughs> for sure. <coughs> uh, looks like, by the way, Lars is not picking up any dark bribe or solemn judgment. Maybe now he did. Yeah, so a face down again. We know RP Feather Duster is there, which uh, I think is gonna come down from PL right here, right now. Is there gonna be an RP Feather Duster? Things start with one day of peace. Uh, and there is a chained metaverse. Interesting by Lars. Not quite sure why he wants to use it now. I would have waited for the RP to just force things out by your opponent, but. Maybe he doesn't want to draw the one copy he kept, I would guess, and uh, uh, this is just going to shuffle his deck. Again, uh, PL looking for the Cauldron and doesn't find it, uh, finds a Solemn Judgment and Ojama Trio instead. Uh, that's really unfortunate by PL, uh, who passes back to his opponent with just the Solemn Judgment face down. Yeah, so Lars uh, pick up a card uh, once again. Uh, And uh, soon enough, uh, it will be a matter of understanding whether uh, they are able uh, to actually win this game or they are interested in just picking up cards and go to game three. Because that's also an interesting consideration. Because uh, if Lars... Uh, oh, okay. That's why he didn't have anything going on. Uh, yeah. He discarded two demise of the land and it the Mystic Mine discarded a couple of cards uh, back from the end uh, and now plays back to PL again looking for the cauldron not cannot stress enough but here maybe he picked it up because we see the RP feather duster there is no reason for Lars to chain his own card I think and yeah it resolves uh, without destroying it you can see both of them smiling out uh, and did we find this cauldron uh, let's see Doesn't seem like it is finally found, so the cauldron comes down from Pial, and this puts a huge clock on this opponent, who might just decides to pick up his cards at this point. Uh, Lars needs to find uh, his own copy of Harpy's Feather Duster, but uh, it's quite unlikely that Pial doesn't hold any copy of Dark Bribe or Solemn Judgment, which yeah. we saw earlier. It's definitely a tough one. Uh, as mentioned, the Cauldron can activate one of two effects. You can either gain life points or deal damage to your opponent. Uh, and in such a matchup, uh, it's not even obvious which effect uh, might be better. But essentially, when you start dealing life points, uh, you can set up uh, a kill in uh, very few turns uh, than you would expect as the damage is incremental. And by the way, during your standby phase, you keep getting you know, these yeah. counters. So it's, uh, it's a lot of counters. So now he pick up a card. I think it's like maybe seven, uh, uh, seven turns or something along those lines where you get enough damage to actually deal 8,000 yeah, life points. But I think PL instead decided to uh, gain. Yeah, he gained life yeah. points instead. Definitely an interesting decision there. Now he puts up uh, the second counter. And my only worry once again is this rivalry, which might uh, be a little too much uh, for PL. Uh, at the same time, now he gets to maybe gain life again. I honestly think it's much better to deal uh, damage. I, I get that you get an incremental, but like when your opponent's strategy is decking out, you just want to deal damage to them. It doesn't matter if you are at 20,000 life points, you still deck out. Well, in seven uh, turns, I believe it is. Do you think is he may be afraid of, uh, you know, having few life points uh, with Solemn Judgment, given that he lost game it's one? It's possible, but again, even then, uh, your opponent at some point will be forced to use Solemn Judgment. So maybe what he wants to do is just gain enough where he can use his Cosmic, we know he has in end, uh, without uh, being below 8,000. Because essentially now he can already gain a thousand, and then uh, even if he activated cosmic, he would still be on 85. Um, 
but I still think it's better to deal damage because as I was saying, uh, essentially what you do is uh, within eight turns I think you win the game, which I can do the math for, but it's, uh, it shouldn't be too complicated. Because now another counter will be placed yeah. upon the cauldron and uh, Lars, the only response that he might be holding in his deck is uh, the Arpis Feather Duster. Um, Absolutely, yeah, as I was saying, uh, all you need is uh, seven uh, turns to win with cauldron. So I think I would have uh, gone for it, especially because if you have the curse for the runic destruction, that's just game, and you can see now that Lars uh, is uh, actually starting to use a different effect. Uh, it looks like PL started um, to inflict damage to his opponent, and he will slowly reduce Lars' life points with the cauldron. Lars gets the Pot of Prosperity on the line, trying to find his own copy of Arpis Feather Duster, which I think we are not going to be seeing anytime soon now. Yeah, and I think the strategy is just having at least more counter traps than your opponent in order to let the Arpis Feather Duster resolve. Yeah, as mentioned, uh, this is actually an interesting uh, uh, little niche interaction, uh, which is essentially uh, that whenever you activate Pot of Extravagance or Pot of Prosperity, uh, as uh, most of you know, you cannot draw cards for the remaining of the turn, which actually makes it so that if your opponent has a Dark Bribe face down, they cannot activate it, which is obviously something that only happens in this matchup, but it's huge to keep in mind, because uh, we know how this can turn into how many cards are there face down in terms of counter traps. And now BL continues to gain life points and uh, Lars is just passing back uh, to BL which is going to add more and more counters turn after turn. Yeah, I, I still continue to think that Lars' last solution in his deck is the Arpis Feather Duster. Yeah, and now we actually get to see PL uh, playing around with this damage and gaining, which I honestly uh, don't quite understand uh, why you wouldn't just go for the same one uh, over and over again. Uh, I think dealing damage is always much better, so I'm a little confused just by this decision from uh, PL. Let's just see. As mentioned, play once again is back uh, with uh, PL getting more, more. And now they're still continuing uh, PL with gaining uh, life points and then uh, reducing Lars. Now he's going to need another die roll for his counters. It looks like Lars cannot find his own copy of the Arpis Feather Duster.
And here we see finally some action from Lars as well. We have seen enough and will try to activate his runic card. We know that there is a curse seal face down. Let's see. Yeah, because we know that um, PL has the curse seal of the Forbidden One. Um, or the Forbidden Spell, sorry, but. Uh, I mean, uh, on the destruction is very powerful. Let's see if decides to activate it or not. But it doesn't. Interesting. Uh, wow. It actually doesn't. Okay. It doesn't try to negate it. That's definitely an interesting decision by Piala. Because I think Piyal is uh, uh, is standing in a good position now because like his uh, his life points are way over than his opponent ones, and if Lars were on the point to activate a stolen judgment, he would be in uh, like basically in trouble because it's only on five thousand life points left, and here Piyal activates his own copy of Cosmic Cyclone on a random one. Let's see what. Is going to, to banish. He has the curse sealed. Uh, Lars is probably going. Yeah, he doesn't know that his opponent is playing just the one copy, as we know, which means that actually negating it is completely useless. Uh, And looks like uh, maybe Piel will soon set. Oh, he has another one. Yeah, and he has another. He has another one. That's why he didn't activate any of his interruption on uh, the runic destruction of yep. some Lars. So now, good play by Piel, recognizing his options. So let's see if there is a response from Lars. And here comes the Dark Pribe. Uh, Dark Pribe on uh, the Cauldron activation. Let's see if there will be a response from Peel. He can afford the Solemn Judgment because he gained this much life. So even with the Solemn, he, he's still ahead in life. Uh, is there going to be another Solemn from Lars? Uh, definitely thinking about it with only three minutes remaining. There is a Solemn Judgment activated from Lars as well. Uh, are we getting uh, yet another one from Peel? Uh, this is going down to the wire. Let's see. Doing some math, uh, of course. And I think it made sense that uh, PL decided to gain life points with the Cauldron because he didn't want basically to waste his life points. So now he's sitting in a position in which he can afford basically to activate another one if he's holding it or not. He doesn't go for it, uh, so both the Cauldron and the Solemns are gonna be sent to the graveyard. Uh, PL picks up a card uh, and now life. Uh, is only 2500 from Lars uh, and there is yet another Cauldron uh, phase potentially in the deck uh, for Pial. Let's see, he picked up yet another card. Uh, let's see if he has anything going on or if he's just gonna set maybe a Dark Bribe face down. Uh, uh, has a few options going on, doesn't want to set too many useless cards, uh, sets one and play should be back to Lars any moment. So Lars picks up a card, is now gonna try and deck out his opponent with some runic, but he discarded I think another copy of runic destruction which is also an interesting decision by Lars. Yeah, play is back right away to Pial, once again trying to pick up his Cauldron. Doesn't seem like he did, but he might go for Upster Goblin. And I think he has Dark Hole as well, Ooh. which can deal a lot of damage to his opponent, because I'm pretty sure the tokens deal 300 each, right? 
Uh, yeah. 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 So Dark Hall can actually deal 1,500 life points uh, whenever activated by Pial, uh, which means only 1,000 life points away from winning this duel, potentially. Yeah, I mean, he's holding into the Upstar Goblin, and then he could activate the Dark Hall afterwards, which will make sense. And now there is a duality from Lars. We can't quite see which cards were picked up, uh, but uh, he doesn't look too happy about it. Uh, gonna shuffle it up, uh, give it back to his opponent. Uh, and as mentioned, there are very few seconds left on the round, which means this one might actually end up in a draw. Let's see. And here comes the Arpis Feather Duster. Uh, actually, a little bit too late, I would say, but... Yeah, and we know that there is uh, the forbidden face down. Dark Bribe is going to be activated by Pial to negate the Feather Duster. Let's see. Does he have anything else going on? About 10 seconds left uh, on the clock uh, for Lars. Uh, gonna go and discard the terraforming in the end phase. Uh, so now Pial picks up a car and time is called. Uh, I believe this is basically now gonna be guaranteed as a draw. But let's see what our judges' final decision will be. And yeah, there goes the handshake. Uh, the duel ends in a draw. Let's go back to us for the post-match discussion. What a match uh, and uh, what a duelist matchup we had. Uh, of course, both uh, trying to target the tier limit, the Shizu deck, most represented deck, as we have seen in the deck breakdown for YCS Dorman. If you missed it, you can find it on our official social media pages. Uh, but just as a spoiler, we have pretty much 25% of the field, uh, so a fourth of the field playing Shizu tier. And I think uh, both of these guys have a huge matchup uh, against the deck, uh, which means uh, that now that they are almost locked in for top 64 with a 9 win, 1 draw and 2 losses record, uh, I think everyone in the top cut is going to be afraid to play against uh, either of the two. But what can we say? Game one, they both try to play out their strategy. We mentioned it from the start. PL strategy is the Cauldron. Just damaging, damaging, and within seven turns, he has enough damage to deal 8,000 life points. The strategy from Lars decking out, and what happens is they both don't have too much going on at the beginning, but then uh, with two clutch meals off the top, Lars banishes two copies of Cauldron, and that's just too much. Uh, he decks out PL, and that's the game. Uh, but in game two, it's the opposite thing. It is PL who finally sets up the Cauldron, gets ahead in life, uh, which, by the way, seemed like an odd decision, but in the end, it paid off for two reasons. One, he had enough life points to activate Cosmic Cyclone and clear the Forbidden Spell. Two, he had enough life points to activate Solemn Judgment and still be on 6,000 life points I had in time. So I would say congratulations to both. They played it really well and now are basically guaranteed a stop in the top 64. Thank you guys for being with us. For This was the last round of Swiss, round 12. So in a just matter of seconds or minutes, we will find out the top 64 duelists for YCS Dormand. Who will be the winner? Just keep watching to find out because we will be back soon with the top 64 match. Keep watching.